Hey Ross World, my money makes money. Vanguard, Vanguard ETFs. And excuse me, as I look over to my left, I written down some notes as well as a lot of stocks. So first and foremost, you can go to https investor.vanguard.com forward slash ETF and all the other jazz. Okay, I'll leave the link in the description for you to reference this for yourself. Now, the reason why I like ETFs, and let me get to my notes here. Excuse me as I look over. And I'm going to read, this is right from www.foo.com. It says, ETFs generally have a slight advantage when it comes to annual expenses ratios. Vanguard, a leader in index funds and ETFs, frequently charges higher fees on mutual funds than it does ETFs. Why is that? Because mutual funds are actively managed. They always have their hand in the cookie pot, all those taxes and commission prices, right? Those fees that I talked about in some of my very earlier videos about mutual funds. Index mutual fund dividends are typically automatically reinvested commission-free into more index funds. And let me Read something that could help you to understand this. Now, this has come from www.investopedia.com. It reads, index funds and ETFs, both are very low cost funds, which invest in a broad index. So there really isn't much difference between the two. When they mean by broad index, they're talking about accumulation of very uh, wow sort of socks like Microsoft and Google, like, in those funds, they have many of stocks that they invest in. The primary difference is that an ETF, listen, an ETF can be traded throughout the day like a regular stock. So say for instance, I have VNQ, that's VNQ, that's a Vanguard stock. I can trade that stock like I could do Google, right, as a regular stock, even though it is an ETF. Now, back to it, whereas a mutual fund can only be bought or sold at the end of the day's net asset value. And that also includes, they're talking about index funds. So ETFs, you can trade like a stock throughout the day and index funds, you have to wait at the end of the day, which you're buying or selling for the NAV, the net asset value. All right, so let's get into some stocks fairly quickly. Go and take a moment and grab your paper and pen or pause the video. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you some tickers. Now, it's quite a bit but I'm gonna try to do the best I can because I'm gonna be flipping back and forth so you don't understand that. First and foremost, all of these are ETFs. They are, they're in different asset classes, and I'm gonna let you know that, and all of them have dividends, and we love dividends. This is for the 20-year-old investor. This is for the 30-year-old investor. This is for the 40-year-old investor, and this is some 450-year-old investors, especially if you buy a thousand, you buy 200 of these stocks. Cause one of my ETF stocks from Vanguard, one paid me a dollar and 26 cents and it was under a hundred dollars. You're trying to figure out which one that is. I just told you VNQ. Anyway, here we go. Stock ETFs under Vanguard, they're large cap ETFs. So the ticker for this one is VIG and it means the dividend appreciation ETFs. Now, a lot of these names are going to be pretty weird, but I'm going to give you the meat and potatoes of this. Now, all of these ETFs are in the large cap asset class. Since inception, okay, you're going to hear me say that a lot. Since inception, this particular ETF has 8.54 return. Remember, I always say that ETFs, index funds, over the course of time have always had seven or above. Here's one of them, 8.45%. The next one. Growth ETF, ticker VUG, since inception, 8.93%. Next one, high dividend yield ETF, ticker VYM, 8.20% since inception. Large cap ETF, ticker VV, since inception, 8.75%. You'll get where I'm getting at. I'm not going to keep going down. I'm going to jump down to some of the juicy ones. Here we go. Mega Cap Growth ETF. <laughs> I like this uh, ticker, MGK. You know what I'm talking about. 10% since 
since inception. We're talking about what, ha what it has been returning year after year since it's been developed, since it's been created on the market. Here's another one. S&P 500 ETF. That's VOO 15.40%. Okay, moving right along, we're going to move to the next section which is the asset class is the mid cap, okay? The mid cap. Now, all of these are 9% point something. So I'm not going to read since inception. Just know that all of these have been returning 9 point something, okay? So over 9%. Extended market ETF, ticker VXF. Mid, mid cap ETF, ticker VO. Mid cap growth ETF. Ticker VOT, mid cap value ETF. Ticker VOE. Did I already say that, or was it VOT? <laughs> Moving right along to the small cap asset class of Vanguard's ETFs. All these acronyms, right? Small cap ETF. Since inception, okay. Small cap ETF ticker is VB. Since inception, nine point five four percent. Small cap growth ETF. Ticker. VBK, 9.39%. Small cap, small cap value ETF, ticker VBR, since inception, 9.45%. Okay. Now, they also have international ETFs. These are very important. These are very important, okay? Because you want to have diversification. You want to invest in the American stock market, you want to invest into the international stock market, you want to invest in China stock market, whoever stock market invest in it. So I'm going to tell you this, a great stock to invest in um, right now for the next, in my opinion, the next 10, 20, 30 years, because just about the amount of people they have and the amount of commerce that they have, Alibaba. I have an Alibaba stock and I've nothing but made money. Now, of course, every day it goes on this roller coaster ride but I've only made money. Check out Alibaba, diversify your stock portfolio. All right, here we go. Emerging Markets Government Bond ETF. That's VWOB since inception, 4.86%. Now, if you notice, these are gonna be a lot lower. There's even one called the FTSE Developed Markets ETFs, ticker VEA since inception, 2.05%. Not juicy at all. But here's a good one. International Dividend Appreciation ETF. Ticker VIGI -I, since inception, 18.43%. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with money at all. I just went to a few of them. Now I'm moving on to the sector and specialty ETFs. Consumer Discretionary ETF. Ticker VCR. Since inception, 9.79%. And I'm going to move down to just one more because it's kind of getting kind of lengthy, right? The Industrials ETF, ticker is VIS, and since inception, 10.18%. Now, I'm going to go over to MarketWatch because MarketWatch really breaks this down for you. I like to give you my sources so you can figure this out. So I'm going to type in VNQ. Stock pops up, and I told you, like I said, it was under $100 right now. It's $79.10. And I'm going to look at the dividend. The dividends for this is 6.37%. Don't look at the percentage. Go to Market Watch. Don't look at the percentage. Look at the dividends in dollars. Exactly. And Market Watch breaks that down for you. I love it. It says dividends yield. 6.37%, the actual dividend in money is $1.26%. I want you to think about this, guys. Think about this. This stock is still growing. It's still growing, right? So these ETFs, these index funds under Vanguard, they slowly grow throughout the year. So the, vo the, vo the volatility of it is low, but even though it's showing growth, you're still getting paid every quarter three or four months, whatever this particular stock is, those dividends. And so take for instance, if you say, hey, I have $1,000, I'm going to buy 
10 of these stocks or maybe at the thousand dollars 10 maybe 11 or 12 of those stocks and every quarter for the rest of time because vanguard ain't going anywhere it's a four trillion dollar company it's going to pay you uh let's say 10 of 10 or 13 if I, I can't do the math in my head right now let's just say 13 dollars every quarter if you did that and you researched all these vanguard stocks and this save you was doing it for dividends because Vanguard is a really safe bet and you're looking at and say what if you're looking at uh, the potential for growth some of them I said 10% and 18% and 15% then do that and all of those have what dividends so don't take my word for it some my portfolio on my Robin Hood which somebody told me to list I don't really like listing my portfolio it's not like there's a lot of money in there y'all guys want to see money but like today, I made 40 bucks. But somebody else who returned 22% probably made 150 bucks. It just depends, right? Depends on your stock mix. Yes, I have international stocks like Alibaba. I have FANG stocks like Google, okay? And I'm even going to invest in Apple because if you look at their EPS, that's earning per share, you will see that they pay out a little bit of dividends, but they have so much money in revenue that they can pay you a lot more. They can actually pay you around 7 to $8 Per stock in dividends and ask any investor that's a lot of money to be given back to millions of investors but they got it that is what the EPS is uh, it was developed upon or created upon to let investors know that that company can pay you this and some of them actually pay it out and that's why I still have Ford okay see that mix I also have Ford that even though they go up and down on the stock market scale they continue to pay 4.9% in dividends. So that's good money, okay? So once again, you want to diversify your portfolio, but I love Vanguard. They also have iShares. iShares is also something to look into. I believe I had one and I sold it. And they also have, I believe, Charles Schwab index funds and ETF. These are all good to look in. I'm biased towards Vanguard because they have been growing a company since inception of their company, okay? And they've been doing a great job Tracking the S&P 500 with the index and the ETF funds. This is Ross World. And I want you to think about longevity. I want you to think about dividends. And I also want you to look at the potential for growth. Are you okay with slow growth? Or do you want explosion growth, which causes more risk? Like you want your stocks to explode, which is a lot more risk, which is fine if you're young. But if you're in your 50s, late 50s, early 60s, it's something you really want to look at. And these index and these ETFs is something you should be really looking at because in the, your timely demise, you can pass these stocks to your to your siblings, you can pass these stocks to your loved ones, to your kids, so on and so forth, and they will begin paid for years to come. And the stocks are only going to grow over the time. It's good to find a good Vanguard stock under $100 or right above $100 at around $115. They really pay out really well. This is Ross World. I've done the research. I didn't really do my whole class here, guys, because it would have been so long. And you'd be like, I hope he just finished. Oh, my God. He's going to tell us every stock, every percentage, every since inception. I know. This is Ross World. Well, I love teaching you guys. And we are family. And go out, make some money. And it's 2018. You know what I'm saying. Get out of debt. I'm out.